Hello and welcome. This is Ted with another Breckenridge ski video. And today I am going to shoot a video to answer a question that has to do with people who are just getting ready to transition from the green runs to the blue runs, uh, where to do that, what are the easiest blues, what you want to ski first and just make sure that you're ready for the blues. So this video is going to be starting at the top of Bonanza. Then I'm going to take you down towards Red Rover and show you the test for before you want to even come to Bonanza. Then I'm going to go over to Peak 8 and ski Springmire and show you what you want to make sure that you're comfortable with before going there. So I just came out of the Overlook restaurant over there. I got off of the Beaver Run chair. And when you're skiing down from the Beaver Run chair to the Overlook, you'll see this sign for Bonanza, easiest way down. And that's what we're going to take up here on Peak 9. Let's go make some turns. So I'm going to cut through these trees here, which is not the way I would take someone for the easiest entrance. The easiest entrance is actually coming down right underneath the Beaver Run chair from the beginning. But I was over at the Overlook. But once you get off the Beaver Run chair, you'll follow it a few hundred yards, maybe, until you see these signs to the right. For Bonanza, it says slow zone, Bonanza family zone, and uh, you'll see these kinds of signs on the very easiest of the, the blue runs of which this is. And right on the other side of this rest zone sign is the steepest portion of Bonanza. So one of the most common questions I get is, you know, what are the easiest blue runs? What are the easiest black runs? Easiest of everything and then the hardest of everything. But I also get asked a lot of questions about the Breckenridge space aliens and how I get them to follow me around all day. So there's a story behind that and I will tell it on another video, I think it's going to be kind of a long story and I want to make sure I've got plenty of time in the run that I'm doing. But the alien cam seems to be a pretty, pretty big hit. This is something I'll include in probably most if not all of my videos this year. I hope to shoot a bunch. And a viewer from this channel suggested that I make it a habit to stop at the bottom of the steepest portions of the given runs and just take a little bit of video looking up the hill uh, to give another perspective of steepness. So that's the bottom of the steepest part of Bonanza. And then as we continue down this way, it will get less steep. So where I'm going to go from here is going to be uh, follow Bonanza down most of the way until I get underneath, almost underneath the Beaver Run chair. And then I'm gonna cross under the Mercury chair, which is the one that I'm about to cross under. And I'm gonna show you where we would load the Mercury chair. Uh, but then I'm gonna continue down past the bottom of the Mercury to the bottom of Red Rover, which is the test of what you wanna be comfortable with before going to Bonanza. So and if I didn't mention it earlier, I don't think I did. I am a Breckenridge real estate broker and ski instructor, and you can find out more about investment property and booking private lessons by visiting brecksnowpro.com. So that's the Beaver Run chair off to my left. I'm turning right to go underneath the Mercury chair, and I'll show you what you should be comfortable with before considering going up uh, Bonanza, which is the easiest of the blue runs. All 
All right, so that's the bottom of the Mercury over there to my left. Past the bottom of the Mercury is the small uh, El Dorado terrain park. Now I'm gonna go under a chair just to show you where that is because a chair is kind of the way to find the test for the blue run. So that's the bottom of a chair down there. Just to skiers left of that is this yellow sign, steeper terrain ahead, which is the bottom of Red Rover. And this is not very long, it's just a few turns but this is about the steepness of a blue run and this is what you want to make sure that you're comfortable on before going to a blue because the blue runs about that steep just a uh, hundred times or more as long. So that was Bonanza to the bottom of the Peak 8 Super Connect and I'm going to take it up and I'm going to show you the other easiest blue run which is Springmire over on Peak 8. I just got off of the Peak 8 Super Connect and I am outside the Vista House restaurant on Peak 8, which is at the top of the Colorado chair over there. And Springmire is going to be just that way. So, of the two runs between Bonanza and Springmire, I would say Springmire is just barely slightly easier. But the green runs on peak eight are a little steeper than the green runs are on uh, peak nine. Over on peak nine is a run called Silverthorn, which is about the easiest run I've ever seen anywhere. It's just very flat and wide and straight and just everything you would want on your first day of skiing, Silverthorn is probably it. So here, Springmire goes off to the right, Crescendo is to the left. I might shoot that one next. Those are the easiest moguls. But here we are on Springmire on the, the Blue Run portion of it. Once again, I will stop down at the bottom and look up the hill. Alien Cam actually does a pretty good job of showing steepness. That's the steepest portion of Springmire right there. And at the bottom of the blue portion of Springmire, it gets easier and Springmire actually turns into a green run. And you can ski the green run portion of Springmire by taking five chair up. So you take five chair up, you can look at the blue run portion of Springmire from the bottom, decide if that's something you want to do or not, and then you'll continue down the green run portion of Springmire, which is what I'm about to do right here. So it really just depends on where you're staying. If you're over on peak nine, and that's where you're starting your day, and you want to do a blue run for the first time, it would be Bonanza. And if you're starting your day on peak eight, then it would be Springmire. So I'm gonna take this down to the bottom of peak eight and I will 
end the skiing part of this video there, but I'm also going to uh, start piecing in at the end of the video is a little bit of information about investment property. And just very quickly here, is anyone considering the purchase of a property for investment purposes, which means you're going to be renting it out to tourists, uh, you'll definitely want to understand this map. And you can find a copy of that by visiting my website, again, brecksnowpro.com. But uh, the town of Breckenridge has recently restricted what is eligible for a short-term rental permit. And not everything is. In fact, most properties are not eligible for short-term rentals anymore. So the people who already owned got grandfathered in, but anyone thinking about purchasing definitely wants to make sure they're, they're looking at the right areas. And I will go over that in a little more detail once I uh, finish up the skiing portion of this video. And here I am over at the bottom of the Colorado Super Chair. If you're over on Peak 9 and you're getting ready to transition from the green runs to the blue, the easiest blue run on Peak 9 is Bonanza. Before you ski that, you will want to make sure that you're comfortable on that little steeper section of Red Rover, which is right at the bottom of A Chair. On Peak 8, the easiest blue run is Springmire. And before you ski that, you can look at the steepest section of it from the top of five chair and then ski down the green run portion of Springmire. I hope you liked that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to hear a little bit about investment real estate in Breckenridge, stick around. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next one. And in the meantime, have fun and be safe. If you are considering the purchase of a property in Breckenridge with the intent of generating income from short-term rentals, then you need to be aware of the local zoning regulations in place which limit the availability of short-term rental permits. And for the purpose of this conversation, short-term means any rental of less than 30 days. Breckenridge has had the current regulations in place for about a year and a half and most of the rest of Summit County has had similar regulations in place for about as long. You can find more information about this at my website, brecksnowpro.com. At the top we have some information about me and ski lessons. Below that, current snow conditions. Below that, active listings in the Breckenridge Resort Zone and Zone 1, which we will come back and look at in a moment. But below that, we have this map, which shows the locations of the Breckenridge Resort Zone and Zone 1. I will come back to what that means here in a moment. But below that, we have uh, uh, which specific subdivisions and condo complexes are included in the Breckenridge Resort Zone and Zone 1. And now we are going to scroll back up and take a notice of this number, 25 currently active listings in Breckenridge Resort Zone and Zone 1. I'm going to click on this link and this is going to bring me to the Town of Breckenridge website, kind of their index page for short-term rental regulation information. So we are currently on this page. I'm going to bring you down to this one. With this table zoomed in, we can start to really understand how this regulation that went into effect 18 months ago works. So in the resort zone, we have 1,800 units, all of which are allowed a short-term rental license, and just under 1,700, which currently have existing licenses in zone one, also just over 1,800 units, just under 1,700 licenses allowed, and just under 1,300 existing licenses. 
So zone one is eligible for about 400 licenses which are not in use. As we come down to zone two and zone three, we see the picture changes. In zone two, there are currently 142 licenses in use with 130 allowed under the regulations that went into effect 18 months ago. That's because existing owners were grandfathered in. In zone three, it's even more dramatic. There are currently just over 1,200 licenses in use and just under 400 allowed. This means that for zone two and zone three, there is going to be a waiting list and for zone three, that waiting list could be decades long. The last thing that I'll point out on this table is that between the resort zone and zone one, there are about 3,600 properties, of which there are currently only about 25 for sale. And we're gonna go back and take a look at that now. So, back here on my personal website, which you can find by going to brecksnowpro.com, you will find this search already created for Breckenridge Resort Zone and Zone 1 real estate listings. If you click here under Save Search and Get Listing Alerts, and then View Filters, you can change this, but this is currently for subdivisions of Beaver Run Condo, Blue Sky Breckenridge, Chateau, and it goes on and on off the screen there, but it is all of these subdivisions and condo complexes in the Breckenridge Resort Zone and Zone 1. So that's already saved for you and uh, if you don't want automatic alerts you can just check this page. Uh, right now there are 25 listings. All of these are currently on the screen and all of them are currently off to the right here with thumbnail uh, summary information. If you click on one you will get the full details and you will find my contact information on each. We go back. Something else to show you about this is right now it shows 25 all on the map. If you want to isolate a certain area, for example, I know that right here is Beaver Run. I put that in the center. I zoom in a little bit, and now there's four on the screen. It shows four here, and those are the only ones currently shown off to the right. One more thing worth mentioning, I'll zoom back out to 25. Over here it will show you the new listings. So we've got eight days on the market, nine days on the market, nine days, ten days. If we scroll down. We'll find price reductions, 10,000 there, 20,000 there. And I am recording this on a Sunday night. If I were doing this on a Friday morning, I'm very certain that there would be open houses over the weekend that would also show up here. That is just a quick overview of the short-term rental restrictions currently in place in Breckenridge. If you have any questions or would like to take a look at any of these properties or any others throughout Summit County, feel free to contact me directly at 970-470-2891 or drop me an email at info at amenta.com. Thank you very much for watching to the end of this video, and you can look forward to seeing more of this kind of information at the end of future ski videos of mine.